If God is for you, it does not matter who's against you. It's a matter of time and you are going to get to the top and you are going to be able to change your world for other people in Jesus' name. Boys and girls, we are beyond excited to be with you guys once again to bring the word, praise, worship, and so much more. Scars went deep and I was all alone When I feel this void with things that took my soul You were there When darkness took a hold of my heart When fear gripped my soul and tore it apart It's a song of submission, so you can really see people connect with God. Uh, you see people with their hands raised up, and the atmosphere is electric. For me, this song is honestly very, very personal, because uh, when we wrote the song, like, oh, we were also going through stuff. So then when, when, whenever we sing that song, I just realize that really whatever I want, whatever I need, it will never be found anywhere else except in Christ. And then I'm a sheep, and then I must trust my shepherd at all times.
Sing a song of joy while you are waiting for your deliverance. Sing a song of praise when you are burdened by depression. Sing a song of worship whilst you are hurting and broken inside. God says, I will fill your heart again with a song of deliverance, with a song of joy, with a song of gladness, with a song of happiness. You will sing again. You will dance again. Yes, by the very rivers of your captivity. God says, I will anoint your head with fresh oil. God says, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And people will talk about my miracles because I'm the God of a turnaround. I'm the God of a new thing. I'm a God of deliverance. Oh, Oh, come on, somebody that is sitting by a river of Babylon this morning, get up off your feet and give the Lord a sacrifice of praise. Even if it's a worship of tears, you give God a sound so God can take a hold with you and change that sound in your heart this morning. A new song for a new day. A new sound for a new day. Hallelujah. Welcome to you all watching live on Faith TV, Facebook Live, YouTube, CRC Online, and listening on our radio stations. Give Jesus a shout if you're ready to pray. You are here. Come on, we clap. As we're lifting up your name, lifting up your name, you are here. As we're giving you the praise, giving you the praise. You are 
good. Tonight as we continue in a time of worship, if you need prayer for anything, we have a team of pastors and leaders waiting online to meet with you and pray with you. Our God does the impossible. So if that is you, please connect with us as we lift our hands and worship.
Come on, that wasn't an end, that was a beginning. Let everything that I breath praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just meant keep on praising Him. Hallelujah. We're not about to land. We're about to take off tonight. Hallelujah. Because if you don't praise Him, the rocks will cry out. Come on. You don't want this building to start praising the Lord. You don't want your house to start praising the Lord. You want to praise louder. Let your praise go through the... the, the the, the floor of your neighbor above you. Let your praise go to the house next to you in the name of Jesus. Come on, one more time. I will praise you. Hallelujah. Amen. Something's going to happen tonight. We're going to have an explosive time. So, Ben, don't go too far. Welcome tonight, Faith TV. Hundreds of thousands watching this program. I gave the leaders all the statistics of how many people watch on Sunday. Over 400,000 households watch. Uh, every single th uh, uh, Sunday just on a few platforms that's without social media without Russia Russia alone 4 million people are watching our program every single week 16% of Russian speaking uh, uh, Jews in Israel uh, come on God's done something amazing even in this lockdown we are preaching the gospel to places we never even imagined so welcome Faith TV thank you Dr. Andre Jenny for allowing us to bring uh, the Word of God live on your platform we love you we honor you you are a true soul winner, a man of God, and we are praying for all of you in America. Interesting days ahead. Hallelujah. Welcome to Facebook Live, YouTube Live, CRC Online, radio stations. Welcome to our beautiful people in Russia. I'm going to learn to speak a few words in Russia um, because we're having a conference there in 2022. Um, we are excited. We, we, there's going to be tens and tens of thousands of people. You know, it's amazing. One door closes, God opens another door. And we are going to go through whatever door God takes us to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Welcome to those in Israel. Welcome to those in America, Europe, India, China, all over Africa. If you love God tonight, I know you do. Stand on your seat, not here, in your home and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to continue um, to change the atmosphere in your heart tonight, if that's okay. So take your seat, unbuckle your seatbelt, put on your dance shoes, put on your praise shoes, hallelujah. And uh, uh, tonight, uh, uh, my title can be, if you don't praise me, or put on the garment of praise, whatever you choose tonight, okay? So tonight you are going to participate. You're not a painting, you're not going to get stuck. Tonight you are going to praise yourself out of your prison. You are going to praise yourself through your valley. You are going to praise yourself through your battle. You are going to praise yourself out of the whale's belly, that situation that's trying to digest you. You are going to praise yourself out of the fiery furnace. You are going to praise yourself out of the midnight hour. Oh, come on, somebody. Let the spirit of praise take a hold of your spirit tonight. Your praise is the highest form of your faith. When you face all hell and calamity, you choose to praise Him. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's start tonight. Make a joyful shout unto God all the earth. Hallelujah. A new sound for a new day. I'm so tired of television, I mean television, that uh, I, I, I don't know what to watch on TV anymore because there's no good news on television. Okay, maybe some uh, preachers on certain channels. But other than that, the world is filled with bad news, negativity, cynicism, and COVID. I've had enough of this COVID, okay? I know it's still there and we're going to sanitize and we're going to be wise, but we are not going to be controlled by this virus. We are going to open our churches come 2021 and we are going to see a restoration of God's glory and we are going to fill stadiums for the glory of God. Oh, come on. I, I don't care if, 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 if what I say makes sense to you. We have the power to praise God and things change when the church of Jesus begins to praise Him. Hallelujah. I feel a shout in my spirit tonight. I feel a dance in my feet tonight. You see, I even put on my dancing shoes tonight. Hallelujah. Praise uh, God. Hulle wat godsdienstig is, is definitief nie vanavond nie. Jy, you've risked enough to come, you're meaning you've risked all the traffic. <laughs> it's, I just want to commend everybody that's over the age of 100. No, 
everybody over the age of 50 that you're not afraid of the virus. I say to people today, we have 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds, 70-year-olds that refuse to be in a lockdown that are radically in love with God because you've walked with God for 60 years, 50 years, and you're not, allow, uh, you're not about to allow fear to dictate, okay? So we are wise, but we are children of the living God. So Psalm 40 again, quickly let me go through this and get to where I want to go tonight. I waited and waited and waited some more. Patiently, knowing, somebody say knowing. God would come through for me. Then at least he bent down, or at last he bent down and listened to my cry. He stooped down to lift me out of the danger from the desolate pit I was in. Out of the muddy mess I had fallen into. Doesn't matter how you got into a pit. What matters is how you get out. And Jesus is the one that will lift you out. We don't have to have a debate when somebody is in a pit. Whether they are the cause, whether something else is the cause, whether it's apartheid that's the cause. It, we don't need the discussions about why people are in a pit. We have to talk about the solutions. We have to talk about change. We have to talk about a better future. We have to sing songs of deliverance. Come on. We have to pick up our harps and we have to sing about the goodness and the glory of God in the name of Jesus. And tell our children and our grandchildren that you have a great future in Africa, in Europe, in Russia. Hallelujah. So he says, he lifted me up into a firm, secure place and steadied me while I walk along his ascending path. Many of you need your spirit to be steadied, your soul, your mind, your emotions. Some of you have been falling to pieces and I'm talking to people on television tonight. Your hope has been dashed. Disappointment has got a hold of you, especially in the beginning of this lockdown. I mean, some people got real crazy, okay? And I don't blame them because we had never faced anything like this. But it's time to allow God to steady us. It's time to get your focus back on Jesus Christ. It's time to get a new song in your heart and a new sound in your heart to talk about your tomorrow and not about your tragedy and your yesterday. Can I have an amen in Jesus' name? So he says, a new song for a new day. Rises up in me. You know, when you watch CNN, there's no new song that wants to rise up. When you watch any news station, when you watch the COVID statistics, when, when, when you hear the president is going to talk again, nobody gets excited. Everybody is like, oh no. May those days change where we leave, have leaders that come with vision and leaders, and I'm not criticizing anybody else, leaders that will speak unity, leaders that will sing songs of love and songs of deliverance and not songs of war. May we have leaders that will unite the people of the earth and talk about a better future for everybody. Talk about the eradication of poverty from the face of the earth because that's not the will of God for anybody to suffer, for any child to go hungry. But we have to change our song Stop talking about the giants. Begin to talk about our God and the greatness of our God, the mercy of our God, the goodness of our God. You may not be where you want to be, but thank God you're not where you were. You may not be what you want to be, but my Bible says He who started the good work in you will finish that work in you. God is faithful, okay? You're going to get to your destination on time. You're going to reach your place, your destiny, and there's no devil in hell that can stop you. So stop whining and crying and sighing about everything. Stop nursing and cursing and rehearsing all your setbacks of yesterday and begin to put a new sound on your mouth. Begin to praise the King of Kings that you are saved, that you are born again, that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You may not have three meals a day, but my brother, you are still eating. And with that strength that you have tonight, you can say God is good and His mercy endures forever. Oh, I know that preceding revival, there will have to be a new sound, a sound from prayer and a sound of praise, a sound that sings of the goodness of God in the face of adversity, that talks about the greatness of God in the face of the greatest challenges that we ever face, that our God is good and His mercy endures forever. Our God is good and His mercy endures forever. You say, Pastor, you said that in the last week. Well, I'm going to keep on saying it until 
until you begin to say, for the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. You could have been dead tonight. You could have been in a grave tonight, but God has kept you alive. God has sustained you. God has carried you through. God has done many miracles in your life. And that's why I can tell you tonight on the authority of the Word of God, you have a great future and a great tomorrow because if God is for you, who can be against you? I declare that you are blessed and you cannot be cursed. I declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are the servant of the Most High God. That length of days will be in your house and the favor of God will surround you like a shield. Come on, say amen and praise Him. I don't care how bad, how tragic, how sad, you have to change the sound, not just on a Sunday night, but on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, seven times a day, will I praise the Lord David said, in my midnight hour, I will praise you. Upon my bed, I will praise you. Cause that's the time that people toss and turn and worry and sweat and fret about tomorrow. David says, no, in the midnight hour, in my darkest hour, when I can't sleep, I'm not going to lie awake and worry. I'm going to praise you because you are worthy of all my praise. Come on, somebody. You're struggling with insomnia. May God break that thing off of you tonight. May God lift that burden off of you tonight. And may you sleep like a baby. In the name of Jesus, give him a praise tonight. Put on the garment of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't take much for, to get people to speak negative. But sometimes the preacher have to use all his energy just to evoke one response positively. Some of you are here tonight and it's like we shall, we shall, we shall not be moved. I'm trying to help you. To get you out of your pit. To a better place. Praise is a supernatural weapon that God has given the church. So he says a new song for a new day rises up in me. Every time I think about how God breaks through for me, ecstatic praise. I love that. Ecstatic praise, not silent praise, not sullen praise, not stultakark praise. Well, listen, I, I, if you look, look at these dancers, you can see some of them had some ecstatic praise. Not conservative praise. It's like people think we have to serve God without emotions. Who do you think gave you your emotions? If you want a tuba, I don't know if it's still around, you have some ecstatic praise for your ticket. Amen. But you have a better thing. You have Jesus who's with you in time of sorrow, who's with you in your times of difficulty, who's with you in your valley, who's with you in times of distress, who promised He will walk you through the valley as your good shepherd. He says, many will see His miracles. They'll stand in awe of God and fall in love with Him. I'm hearing a lot of good testimonies. As much as I hear about tragedy, I hear so many good positive testimonies of how God is sustaining people, how God is blessing people, how God is giving people amazing opportunities and amazing favor. And that's but the beginning because I'll have prophesied and I'll declare it until you believe it, you will recover all. Listen to me, you will recover all. And 2022 will be a year of restoration, spirit, soul and body in your life. Say amen in Jesus' name. So he says, People will stand in awe of God. They'll fall in love with Him. Blessing after blessing comes to those who love and trust the Lord. They will not fall away. So I want to talk about putting on the garment of praise. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. The prophet says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, business, clients, there be no herd in the stalls. He says, even if there's no reason in the natural to want to praise God, you still have to make up your mind to praise God. You have to stand in the face of your adversity, in the face of your disappointment, in the face 
of your tragedy, in the face of your loss, you have to position yourself in that place, as this prophet says. He says, even if there's no reason, because I'm not rejoicing in my situation, I'm rejoicing in the Lord, as Paul writes. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice in the Lord. Finally rejoice. That means you keep your trust in God in the difficult times. Because it's praise that will sustain your faith. If you stop praising God, you will lose your victorious spirit. You have to keep the sound that comes from your heart, a sound that magnifies God. Because if you don't magnify God, you're going to magnify your problem. You're going to magnify the negativities in the world. So the prophet says, even if it's as bad as it can be, I will rejoice in the Lord. Say it tonight. Say, I will. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I will joy because my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. I am heaven bound. My sins are forgiven. Oh, come on. I have a reason to rejoice. I may not have a billion rand, but tonight I know I am blood washed. I am heaven bound. My sins are forgiven. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed my sin from me. Come on. If you know tonight your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, give him a bit of a praise. Rejoice. Come on. He says, don't rejoice because you do great things. Rejoice that you are saved. Rejoice that you are born again. Rejoice that you are heaven bound. Rejoice that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. Nobody can take that away from you. Rejoice that you are a child of God. Hallelujah. Because restoration follows rejoicing. Listen to me. I'll say it again. Restoration follows rejoicing. Israel, when they sat down at the riverbanks, the river of Babylon, they had to take their harps off the willow trees again. And they had to begin to sing a song of deliverance. I know the last thing you feel like talking about is, is, is about better days when you're having bad days. It's to talk about God's goodness when everything in you says God is not good. And why has this happened when you have, you know, not even a Job moment. One of the moments Job had when he lost absolutely everything. He lost his business. He lost his family. He lost his children. Think about it. No person ever went through the calamity that Job went through. He lost everything in one day. Well, he gets this bad report, something else happens. Then something else happens. Then his children die. His business dies. He loses his, family, uh, his, his camels. He loses his sheep. He loses his servants. He loses absolutely everything. Then he loses his health. And he's full of, he, he, he falls on the ground, not in a hopelessness. But in trust, in desperation. I told you last week, sometimes the only way to praise God is with the very tears in your heart. But those tears are not tears of morbidity. Those tears are tears of hope. Those tears are tears of trust. That when you fall to the ground and his wife stood there and she mocked him. Like those Babylonians mocked the children of Israel when they sat by the river of Babylon. And they said, sing us a song of deliverance. Sing us a song of your God. Sing the songs that you used to sing in Zion. That is Satan, a mocker. When you're down, he's going to stand there and he's going to mock you and he's going to say where's your God that was Job's wife and she said why do you hold on to your faith why don't you curse God and die and Job said even though God smites me yet will I trust him we know God never smote him but that was the faith of Job no matter what I went through no matter what loss of I have experienced my relationship is in him it doesn't change who God is no matter what I'm facing no matter what I'm going through the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Come on. Some of you have gone through some things. Some of you are facing some battles and you have to change the sound. Come on. I could have moved on tonight, but I know this is where the Holy Spirit is pausing me. You have to change the sound in your heart and begin to talk about the goodness of God. Talk about the mercy of God. Talk about the greatness of God. Begin to talk about God's deliverance when you're in the land of bondage. Talk about God's provision when your stalls are empty, when you have no money in the bank. Talk about God's healing power when there's sickness and disease in your physical body. Talk about the greatness of God when everything in your life seems to be crumbling and falling apart. Come on, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to have a praise moment in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, express your faith in front of your television.
Come on, if we're not going to praise Him in this place, we're not going to praise Him by ourselves. If we're not going to praise Him in the corporate anointing, we're never going to praise Him in the boardroom. Restoration follows rejoicing. Rejoicing is an active decision. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. The sound of rejoicing and praise will be heard in the tabernacle of the righteous. The voice on the battleground is a voice of rejoicing, not a voice of anguish, not a voice of desperation, but a sound of victory, a sound that declares the goodness and the greatness of God on the battleground, a sound that magnifies the name of Jesus above every other name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. Praise shall be continually in my mouth. So he says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like the deer's feet. He will make me walk on the high heels. Say it tonight, say I'm going up. Say I'm going over. Say I'm going higher. Say I am on the path of recovery in Jesus' name. So you may feel like you're in a whale's belly tonight. I liken that to a situation that tries to digest you. I counsel people all the time, and then they're, they're in a digestive marriage, or they're in a digest not that readers digest, they're in a digestive um, business, emotions. You know, depression is a terrible thing. And my heart goes out for people that struggle with depression, bipolar depression. A lot of things that people just think it's a devil. Hey, not everything's a devil. If, if somebody breaks an arm, it's not a devil. They broke their arm. And sometimes people lack serotonin and they lack certain things that cause them to live a life of depression where everything, suddenly the colors are not as bright as they used to be for no reason. Sometimes people suffer with a smile on their faces. The girl that sits next to you, been abused, molested. And she's the last one that should be praising God, and yet she is. Saw a beautiful picture this week of one of our leaders in Bloemfontein, and um, she was out of the equation for a little bit because she was raped. She kept it away from everybody. Violently raped. Then she had a baby, and she's taking care of the child, and somehow she has turned that negative situation, something that nobody wants to happen, she's turned that negative situation into a positive situation, and she said, I'm not going to allow this that Satan caused or tried for evil to derail me and stop me from the life God has for me. So even if I didn't plan this child, this child, child is authentic and I'm going to raise this child for God and this child is going to be somebody great in God's kingdom. Come on, that's the attitude that I'm talking about. Turning the negative, turning the adversity, turning the sorrow, turning the pain into something beautiful. Allowing Jesus to give you beauty for ashes. Because sometimes the devil wants you to think you're the only one going through what you're going through. Well, as pastors, we hear everything. And then sometimes people that praise the Lord the loudest, like our one worship singer that's going for a big operation this week, some of you won't even know she's uh, facing anything because of the way she praises God. And some of the, you, the only thing that's stopping you from praising God is the five, 50, 15 kilograms you put on <laughs> during the lockdown. And then you look at people as if they're crazy because you must have perfect. You've got all your doctrines worked out, but you're a cynical, sour, lemon-sucking Christian. And you have an opinion about everything and everyone. And the only opinion that really matters is Jesus' opinion that stepped into this world to heal a broken world, to comfort afflicted people, to help humanity and to lift people out of their trials and their tribulations. If you live long enough, you are going to face some storms, some trials, and some adversity. But it's okay, 
Jesus said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And because I've overcome the world, you will overcome the world as well. That's why you can rejoice in the Lord. That's why when you face trials, tests, and tribulations, you can count it all joy because you know your faith is being tested and God's going to have the final say and you're not going to give in to the adversity, to the negativity, to the betrayal, to the institutional racism, to the unfairness, to the injustice, the injustice that you've experienced. You're going to rise above because you're going to keep your eyes upon Jesus Christ and you're going to run your race strong and you're going to keep your hands raised and you're going to give the Lord glory. Can I have somebody up there in the corner give the Lord a mighty praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's not a person here that has not had reasons to quit. It's not a person here that hasn't had reasons to abandon Christianity. It's not a person here tonight that have had not had reasons to get offended. It's called life. But then you have to guard your own heart. And you have to keep Jesus at the center of your own life. And you have to allow Jesus to turn your tragedy into a triumph. You're not going to go very far in this Christian journey. Keeping your distance from Jesus. We're not talking about a religion here. So he came and I want to close there. Actually, I'm starting, but I have to close because of our wonderful short services because we're on television. I mean, back in the day, an hour was long. Now we're not even getting started. Isaiah chapter 61. Listen again. Restoration follows rejoicing, and I'll prove it to you from the Bible. Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord God's upon me because the Lord has anointed me. That's His assignment, to preach good tidings to the poor. Poverty is a curse. Poverty has to be eradicated from the face of the earth. And I believe that when people unite the church, churches, with politicians, with business, with tertiary institutions, etc., etc., we can eradicate poverty from South Africa by the year 2030. I'm going to challenge every politician to come with a goal to bring manufacturing back to South Africa, industrialization, textile industry, to bring work back to South Africa, to empower our people in South Africa so South Africa can be a prosperous land. Shout amen in Jesus' name. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. The opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jubilee. Freedom. Liberty. The burden lifted. The guilt lifted. The shame removed. Freedom. The day of vengeance of our God. Listen now to comfort. All who mourn. And that's the problem I have when Christianity, Christians make Christianity just about themselves and about their family and the people that think like them and talk like them. And that's why Jesus came. The Bible says, God so loved the world. The angel announced, good news, peace on earth, and goodwill to all mankind. Goodwill. God's intention to all, toward all mankind is goodwill. Not suffering. People suffer because of greed. People suffer because of evil dictatorship. Because of leaders that exploit the poor. Leaders that hoard. I mean, how much is enough? One billion, two billion, ten billion, hundred billion. Says to console those who mourn in Zion, the church. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. That's the restoration I'm talking about. By the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost. Where God is going to come and He's going to address every need in your life. By the presence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Say Amen. To give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So you can't put on the garment of praise. You have to get yourself in the presence of God and then the Holy Ghost is going to get a, a, a hold of you and He's going to shake that depression off of you. He's going to break that morbidity off of you and you will not be the same person no more. 
the Spirit of God is going to come upon you and you're going to be turned into another man. Oh, come on. That addiction is going to be broken over you. That bondage is going to be broken off of you. That language is going to be changed out of you. That's when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of somebody. That's what we are going to see in 2021, 2022. Exactly what Jesus promised, that they may be called the righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He may be glorified. Listen now. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair, repair the ruined cities, the desolation of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. The sons of foreigners shall be your plowmen and your wine dressers. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of shame, you shall have double honor, restoration. Instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Hallelujah. Therefore in their land, South Africa, Botswana, wherever God has placed you, they shall possess double everlasting joy shall be theirs in Jesus' name. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth and will make them an everlasting covenant. So this is what God is saying. Before there can be um, restoration, there has to be revival where God gets a hold of His people, where God heals you, where God comforts you, where God delivers you, where God gets you uh, into union with Him again. Then God says, you will be strong again. You will live free again. You will be enthused again. You will have faith again. Not by might nor by power, but by the Holy Ghost. And you will rebuild again. You will be a repairer. You will be a restorer. You will be a deliverer. You will be a hope giver. You will be an uplifter of humanity. But God says, first I'm going to move in you. And I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to comfort you. And I'm going to heal you. And I'm going to put a garment of praise upon you. And I'm going to take away your ashes. And I'm going to give you beauty. And you are going to talk about my goodness. Because my goodness will overwhelm you. Come on, if you receive it tonight on television. You're in this place tonight. In Bloomingdale, Johannesburg, wherever you are. Give the Lord a praise tonight. Hallelujah. Now there's certain things only God can do. Take your seat, please. I want every head bowed, every eye closed, just for a moment. We have two minutes left, no one moving. Maybe tonight you're watching me on television and you say, Pastor, I don't have a lot of reason to shout. And I'll tell you why. Because life has disillusioned you and life can be tough. You maybe sit here tonight in one of our churches. The key is Jesus came to bring you peace. And until you don't find eternal peace, you will never find happiness, destiny. Maybe you're sitting there tonight, you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus. If I die tonight, I don't even think I'll go to heaven. Maybe at one time you served God, but you've grown cold. Tonight, God says, I want to give you a new beginning. Sitting in this place tonight, you say, Pastor, you're talking to me. I need a new beginning. If that's you, they're in television land. Slip up your hand quickly. Just say, yes, that's me. I need a new beginning. Raise it up, raise it up, raise it up all over this place. Just raise it up. Thank you. God bless you. Raise it up. Say, yes, raise it up, raise it up. You raised up your hand in television as well. Put your hand on your heart tonight and just say this. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I receive you into my life as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died for my sin. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you are alive. Tonight, I give myself back to you. Thank you for loving me and for accepting me. I'm your child filled with hope. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Oh, give the Lord a praise because there's more joy in heaven over one sinner that comes to repentance than over 99 that need no repentance. Unfortunately, we cannot bring people to the altar call. Uh, yeah, because of social distancing. But our counselors are wide awake for those that have raised hands, and that's definitely not going to become our culture. That's just unfortunately where we are, and with wonderful television that is limiting our time, but we're reaching so many people through television that we don't mind that. 
But I want to say this to you. There is no substitute for the house of God. And don't come and tell me now you are the house. You want to debate doctrine, I'm the wrong person to debate. Because I'll debate you under the table any day of the week. The Bible calls the church the pillar and the ground of all truth. Calls the church the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. It calls the church the temple of God. Individually, you are the temple. Corporately, we are built up for a dwelling place. So those who are enemies of the church are enemies of God. Because you cannot love Jesus and be against His church. And you cannot have the theology that you can serve God by yourself. Because Jesus never taught us to pray, my Father. He taught us to pray, our Father. New Testament is all about serving God together, not serving God in isolation. Otherwise, God doesn't know what He did when He birthed the church on the day of Pentecost. I mean, if anybody could pour out the Holy Ghost all over the world and put a little fire there and a little fire there and a little fire there, it was God. But He didn't. 500 people saw Jesus ascend into the heavens. 380 became impatient. 120 was left on the day of Pentecost. And when the Holy Ghost came, 120 were filled with the Holy Ghost that were gathered together. And the church is born, or the church is birthed. And immediately God adds to the church 3,000, and they continue daily in the temple and from house to house. Not just in the houses. Like some deceivers say, well, it's a new order. People need to now learn to serve the Lord in, in their homes by themselves. Well, that is so foolish because many of those people, everything they know they learned in the church. There are many new converts that need the church, that need to be educated in the church. Their children have to be raised in the church. It's okay if you believe of 30 years and you want to go sit in your home and suck your thumb every week and just wait till you die. But that's not why you are here. Bible says God set the members in the body. It's a very simple illustration. If anybody could pour fire, tongues of fire, on people everywhere, God could. But He designed the church to operate corporately. The universal church has its expression through the local church. The local church will be there until Jesus comes back. That's biblical. Don't change the Bible. Because you backslidden and you like your couch. And you're not interested in the kingdom of God. Best thing you can do is fly away. Because you're not helping anybody. More than ever we need believers together. We need the church to be mobilized. We need Christians to stand up. We need to save the lost. We have to plunder hell. We have to populate heaven. We have to mobilize Joel chapter 3, God's people. Say amen, come on. Because we are going to pray these things and we are going to be radical come 2021. We are going to be radical. Radical. We are opening the church radically. 2021, radically opening the church to fire on all systems, all cylinders and to do the work of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we'll do so safely. But we're not going to sit in a corner somewhere and just be told all the time, shut up and sit down. So we're not having 2021 repeat itself. So I say these things because I believe that's the direction we are going. And... Um, I ask the question often, I've been a pastor for 34 years, I know like I look 34, but I've been a pastor for 34 years from my mother's womb, amen. No. <laughs> and um, nothing happens in isolation. Isolation is a form of punishment. Teenage suicides is an all-time high, teenage pregnancy is all-time high, depression all-time high, Hopelessness all time high. We can't allow this. And by that I'm not saying we're foolish. We're going to fight this virus. And if this virus goes and another virus comes, because 10 to 1 that's going to happen, because there's people behind whatever to establish a different world order. 
I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but that's just reality. Um, and we know it's the spirit of the Antichrist. And a lot of social justice programs, they are righteous and they are unrighteous. Well, social justice is now the buzzword all over the world. And many people are using the word social justice to promote an ungodly agenda. So when I spoke on the forum with lecturers, professors, all the clever people, I just made a very simple statement to say there can be no justice without God. You're not going to take God out of the equation and think humanity will bring justice. The world is in a mess not because of God. The world is in a mess because of corrupt leadership and because of leadership that do not serve the people. So we need God back in our government. We need God back in our parliament. We need God back in our schools. We need God back in our businesses. We need God back. We need God exalted as the highest authority in our nation in South Africa. We have to talk about the laws of abortion where babies are being aborted at 20 weeks, 26 weeks, 32 weeks, and full-term abortions. That, by the way, is a sacrifice to Satan when innocent blood is shed at that level. We need to talk about these things that people don't want to talk about if we want God to move in our nation. You cannot follow the liberal agenda of America that talks about a 40-week baby and that that child or that 40-week old child is not called a child. And that child has no right to life. When my daughter is pregnant, my daughter-in-law is pregnant, second baby she's having, and doctors will know the life that is in that womb and how those babies respond from a few months. Now, if you've been through an abortion, I'm not criticizing you. Um, and I understand there are some medical reasons, but I'm not in agreement with the legislation where people can just treat life, unborn life, any way they want to. You just discard any child. You just get rid of that baby. I, I can never be in agreement with that. And, 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 and those are things that have to be changed. Those are the things that have to be addressed seriously. You, you want the blessing of God, and, and, and it's one of the signs that there's going to be great revival, because when Moses was born, there was the slaughter of babies. When Jesus was born, there was the slaughter of babies. There's a slaughter of babies happening on planet earth and nobody cares about that. You want to talk about justice? You want to talk about justice? Then talk about that child. Talk about that child that's six months old in the mother's womb. Talk about that. Life. David says, before I was formed in my mother's womb, you knew me. The church cannot allow politicians to lead the agenda when it comes to life, when it comes to eternity. Oh, come on! In the name of Jesus Christ. The church has to stand up and the church has to be vocal. Not just about some issues that are affecting you, but about all issues of injustice. All issues. The one who demands the shedding of blood is Satan. It's a sacrifice. People don't know it, they blind it. And I'll say it again. I understand we have many people that have gone through abortions and things like that. And I promise you, if you know anything about me, I'm the last person that will ever condemn or judge you. But before you think about aborting that baby, come talk to us. And allow us to help you. We have baby homes. We have people that will adopt the child right out of your womb. We have people that will pay the bills while you are pregnant. We are people that will love you and take care of you. We'll even pay your medical bills. We are not going to abandon you. But we want to protect that baby in your womb. And we want to raise the child for the glory of God. Because all life comes from God. 
Can I have an amen tonight? Come on in Jesus' name. So we're not here to be popular. And at my age, I definitely do not seek popularity. On the contrary. Not like some young preachers that still want to be popular. You can't be popular and effective. They don't go together. You can't be liked by the world and obey God. It just doesn't go. So when we say certain things, we better go back to the Bible. And the last time I looked, I'm an ambassador of God before I am an ambassador of anything else. This life, as you know, it is a vapor. So you may be most important and you're passing certain legislation that is costing the lives of countless of children and you'll stand before God one day and give account. So when we talk about the rights of mothers, we have to talk about the rights of the babies as well. I understand there are medical situations. I'll say it again. But this God Blanche attitude is not okay. When innocent life, when blood is shed, it grieves the Holy Spirit more than you can imagine. And if it's not addressed, it will cause God to lift His hand from that nation. So there are so many things we have to talk about. Some of you are on one bandwagon, bandwidth. You have one bandwidth. I don't even want to say how narrow that bandwidth is. Because I don't want to insult you. But you have one bandwidth. It's all you can talk about. And you turn a blind eye to everything else. Because you're stuck. Like, you know, the young people don't know those records. What, do you know what a record is? No. <laughs> well, some of you know what a record is. But most of these young people have no cooking clue what a record is, okay? So you're stuck like a record. You know, it's a thing that you put on a turntable that actually made a sound. <laughs> and you put a, a thing on with a needle. And then that thing would sometimes, the groove, that thing would get stuck there. And, and it would, would be the same thing over and over and over. That's some of you on social media. Over and over, and over, and over, and over, and over. You're venting your anger. You're venting your offense. You're venting, 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 venting. No matter how good it sounded at the start, eventually nobody wants to hear it. Even your friends that initially liked your post and agreed with you, you still vent three years later. Say, no thank you. I'm moving on. Change your sound, my brother and my sister. Get, them, get thyself back in the Word of God. Get yourself back in the Bible. Begin to read the Bible. Begin to read the Psalms. Read the Scriptures. Read the teachings of Jesus Christ. And get your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Because your life is hidden with Christ in God. You are a new creature. That doesn't mean we're not going to address the injustices of the day. I just said that from Isaiah chapter 61. But you cannot address anything whilst thou art broken. Thy has to be fixed first. A broken record will not make a clear sound. So you have to allow Jesus to deal with your anger, your bitterness, your resentment. Your unforgiveness, your father's anger, your ancestor's anger, whatever it is. Because this relationship with Jesus is a personal relationship. It's not about walking out of the church and then asking your friend, what do you think about what the pastor said? Who cares what you think? What does the Bible say about what the pastor just said? What does Jesus say about what the pastor just said? Sometimes you just have to put some of your friends 
at a little distance and you have to love them from a distance. You have to put a little bit of a daylight between you and your cynical, negative, racist free that has no time. That never has anything positive to say. Otherwise, that evil communication is going to corrupt your good morals. I mean, when, when you have a friend and they're offended and they come tell you their story, and you know when people tell their story, they always color it in. And every time they tell it to somebody else, the story is more colorful. I mean, the Bible, just go to the Bible. The Bible says, he that pleads his cause first always seems right. The Bible. That's why when we counsel people, we never counsel individuals alone. I mean, the wife walks in and she says, Oh, my husband. Oh, my husband. Oh, my man. Don't think you live a block school. Don't call me man and sit there and and say, I still have to get it for you. Here is the so a tap. I said, but he's come this tap. This is a claw. This is a kak, 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 kak. And then he prays the year. I said, but he's going to get it. No. <laughs> but if they sit there together, it's like, uh, my liefie, um, um, <laughs> I mean, he's actually a problem, not pastor. Um, and then I can say, but yesterday you didn't have a good thing to say. Nie. You've got to change the sound. You've got to get a control of your tongue. You're going to have to learn to guard your heart more than anything else. You're going to have to learn to be loyal when you talk about people and they're not there. What you say beyond people's backs, what you say in front of your children, what you talk about, you, 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 you know, because the, 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 the walls have got ears. The Bible says he that repeats a matter separates chief friends. Let the sound in relationships be a sound of love, mercy, grace. Let the sound when it comes to God be a sound of praise, worship, adoration. Let the sound when it comes to your future be a sound that is positive, that is hopeful, that inspires hope. We saw this morning that 10 people caused a whole nation to lose their destiny. I've learned. I don't keep many, allow many people close to me. If I play golf with somebody and that person has a negative spirit, last time ever, I'll play with that person. I mean, by the ninth hole, I'll find a reason to be out, just to say, oh, gee, I forgot about a meeting. Sorry, I have to go. I'm out of here. Thank you very much. Because nobody can handle negative energy. People that are just negative. People that don't have a good word to say about anything or anybody. You're not going to go very far like that. Surround yourself with people that are of like precious faith. People that are optimistic. People that love the world. People that want to see the world a better place. Uh, even if it means you have to leave your political party. Be positive. Love black people if you're a white person. Love white people if you're a black person. Get yourself surrounded with people that make the sound that you want to hear. Otherwise, the wrong sound will take you back from where you have come, from whence thou hast come us. <laughs> it will take you back. And this COVID disease has taken many people back, many regressed in their thinking, in their speaking, in their love, in their attitude, in the way they see things, in their forgiveness, in their love walk. That's why you have to get back to church so you can see people aren't as bad as your friend makes them out to be. People are actually loving. It's great to be a child of God. It's great to worship God with people of other cultures. It's great to be alive. It's good to know that God is good, that God is still on the throne. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ, refuse isolation and refuse training relationships and walk with Joshua, walk with Caleb, walk with Jonathan, 
walk with David, walk with Esther, walk with those who are giant slayers, problem solvers, opportunistic seers, walk with people who are proactive and you will find yourself walking again as well. Come on, if you want to climb Mount Everest, you're not going to practice on Naval Hill. You are going to practice on the second highest mountain and you're going to go higher and higher and higher. Some of you have to break some of those relationships that are always keeping you back and you have to build some relationships with people that are going to take you higher. Come on, God is good. That's advice for free tonight. Give God one more praise here tonight. Come on, He's good. The Lord is good. Come on, you're on the move. You are on a journey. You are on a path that is ascending. God says you are going to be the head and you will not be the tail. Come on. You have an attitude of courage. You have an attitude of strength. You have an attitude of faith. You have an attitude of praise. You remain optimistic, upbeat in a town world. Come on. Certainty in uncertain times. My God will not fail me. You make up your mind to be strong and to be courageous, to walk with God because the greater one lives on the inside of you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and he will quicken your mortal body, energize you, lead you and guide you into all that God has for you. So I declare tonight, you are blessed, you are highly favored, you are the head, you are going places, the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. You are unstoppable. You are the people that will turn the world upside down, right side up. You have a spirit of glory on the inside of you. You are going from glory to glory because of Jesus. If you believe it tonight, give the Lord one more praise in this place. Hallelujah. If God is for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. More determined. More determined. Whatever knocked you down has made you stronger. You get back on your feet. More determined. More resilient. Stronger than yesterday. In Jesus' name. Whatever you do, never lie down. You get back up again. And the God of grace will strengthen you. The God of mercy will strengthen you. God will keep you. Your future is bright. You better go get sunglasses for 2021. Amen. Amen. Take your seat. Um, a big shout out to our children's church. Let's just first praise this fantastic band, all of them musicians. Amen. We love you. Thank you for playing your hearts out like I preach my heart out every Sunday, okay? We lay it all on the platform. It's no half measure when we do something for God. But here's the good thing. He refreshes us while we refresh others. I mean, if I sat at home tonight, I'd be tired. Um, children's Church. Um, <laughs> I forgot in the leaders' meeting to say, and we had thousands, well, I can't say thousands. We had a lot of people at the leaders' meeting. In any case, um, <laughs> praise the era. Um, one gospel, technology has been an amazing thing. And uh, we're reaching so many people because of the television program, so Angelique. And the Children's Church, so Lee and everybody, you are doing absolutely amazing. We love you. And all the projects the Children's Church is doing. Also, a big shout out, I should have done it this morning for the women of Zone 1 that are involved in, in, in giving food to those 500 uh, teenagers every single Friday. Uh, and the people that are helping them to do sport, to get them out of drugs and out of everything else. I don't know what our education system doesn't understand. Boredom leads to terrible things. You don't need young people bored. I was young as well. COVID would have been heaven for me when I was a, if I, when I was a teenager. As he, my mees is a ma by die werk, as in die paas by die werk, en ek is alleen, denk ek het gaan studeer. Ek het in elk geval nie studeer in die jare nie, so denk wat het sou gewees sê. Huh? You think your teenagers are studying? Forget it. We need our schools open. We need the universities open. Not in March, we need the universities. We need our young people educated. Amen. We're going to talk about to the politicians about these things as well, and they must explain to me why they're making these decisions. Because it makes absolutely no sense to me. 
And talk about education and you set people up for failure. So it's the only way I can figure it out. You've lost a year and you're coming back to university in March, end of March. What the heck is that? What kind of people are we raising up? So we have to wake up and hold our politicians accountable. Common sense would have said that they should have run this year over to next year and next year give the kids one holiday and catch up on education. People aren't going to sit in front of a computer. Half of people don't have computer. Data is the most expensive in the world. It's not rocket science to figure these things out. The virus doesn't affect young people. So get the people back to school. Get the students back at class. Otherwise, we're going to have doctors. If you go for, for, for a new operation, they're going to cut your arm off. <laughs> Listen, when I went, it's a fact. When I went for knee surgery, I was 16 years old. Um, <laughs> shame. The guy that lay across from me, they, yet they cut his wrong leg off. Can you imagine that? I mean, he woke up and he was shouting. I thought he was in pain. He said, ah, you don't even get a beer and half a snake. I didn't believe get a beer and half a snake. And then they went that same day and cut the other leg. Now I understand when you go there, they, they say, is it your left knee? And they put a million marks to make sure it's the left knee. Because they operate the right knee and there's nothing wrong on the right knee, but they've operated for three hours. I mean, the guy kangaroo. Could they not even see it? They chopped the wrong leg off. So we don't want those kind of doctors, I mean. So we want the universities open. We want our young people back. We want lawyers that can actually defend people after they've got their law degree. Right? Come on, young people. You should begin to stand up for yourself and demand education. Demand your... Don't take the path of least resistance. You should begin to stand up and say, we want the university open. We pay for education. We want our universities open. We want our schools open. That's your future I'm talking about, okay? On that cheerful note, we are going to receive the offering. So Pierre is going to do the offering. Give him a hand clap, and then we can listen to anointed item. Amen. So good to be in the house of God, right? So good to see so many of you. Amen. Um, I want to start off by saying and really honoring Pastor Ut and Narita. And I want us all just to honor our leaders for the amazing leaders that have been through the whole lockdown, the whole COVID situation. Pastor, we honor you and we love you really from the bottom of our hearts and continue to pray for our leaders um, more than ever. God is still building his church and uh, we are running in the front. So it's so good to be here tonight, and uh, it's a great honor for me to speak to you about your tithes and offerings, about giving, because it's a huge part of your life. Now, this Christian journey that we are part of is either an all-in journey, it's either one big daring adventure, or it's nothing at all. And we have to get stuck in with every ounce of our being. So God is after your heart. I want to say that. God pursued you while you were lost. God's after your heart. God's not after your money, but when God has your heart, He has your whole being. He has your whole being, every single part of your life He has. And I've got a question for you. Is money your servant or are you a servant for your money? Does my money serve the purpose of God in the house of God? Your money is a big part of your life and Jesus knew that. That's why He addressed it. But Jesus also knew that when He saved you, He has to become the Lord of your life, meaning when He becomes the Lord, He has to take ownership of who we are. He cannot just be our Savior. He has to become the Lord. He owns everything that we have. And this is our journey in this Christian walk. Now, Matthew 6, 24, Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for they either will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is... Speaking, uh, spoken of is the God of money, but it's actually the force that enslaves you to money. Jesus said you cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. He wants you to be free from the fear of money and what money does to your life because God owns everything, right? The silver and the gold belongs to God. 
The cattle and the thousands hills belongs to God. God is your provider, not money. God owns everything. So God wants you to be, God wants to be the owner of your finances while we are the stewards of what he has given us. God wants you to be a river of living water and not just a reservoir to keep everything to yourself. Are you serving money or does your money serve the purpose of God in your life? Are you worshiping money or is your money an act of worship towards the things of God? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, let each one give as he has made up in his own mind and purposed in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. Now, tonight choose to give to God always like that. Choose to give to God always with a glad, surrendered prompt to give heart as we are going to establish God's kingdom more than ever next year you are the future God is raising up the greatest generation you're going to fund the kingdom expansion to where God's going to raise you up so may God bless you as you give and we are going to let the ashes rise and take up the offering as we listen to an anointed item by the greatest band in the world the CRC band amen Consume me, my heart is ready. And God, if I burn, I burn for you with no hesitation, without reservations. God, if I burn, I burn for you. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I'm gonna burn for you. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I'm gonna burn for you. Yeah. Every breath I'm breathing. Moment I'm giving, God, if I live, I live for you. I love your presence, you're my obsession. God, if I live, I live for you. Oh, and God, if I live. Fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I'm gonna burn for you. Yeah. I'm gonna burn for you, Jesus, for the whole world to see. Let it burn. So light a match, let it go. The place uncontrolled. I want that fire. I want that fire. Come on, we sing. So light a match, let it go. Set a blaze uncontrolled.
Fresh Fire, what a great, great, great song. We're going to sing it in church. That's LJ and that's Letitia. Letitia, we love you, eh? We love you. We're all behind you. Amen. What a great evening. What a great evening. Can't wait for everything just to be back. Music is absolutely incredible that comes from this platform. You all are my favorites. I love you all to bits. All these musicians, thank you. Thank you, both of you. Keyboard players, you're incredible. Um, Guitarists, drummers, everything. God's blessed us. We have so much rich talent. Um, it's incredible. Um, it's just nothing like it. You go to Mainland, Maine or whatever, and everybody's drunk, and everybody's in the restaurants, and everybody's partying, and everybody wakes up depressed. You're not leaving here depressed. You're leaving here happy, uplifted, blessed. Amen. How do you want not this? Only want to doesn't want this is the devil and his advocates amen now may the love of god this amazing god who's your father who loves you he's real may 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 god love you may god keep you in the palm of his hand may love the love of god be more real to you may you understand the length the width the breadth the height of the love of god which is unending everlasting and there's nothing that can separate you from this amazing love that god has for you May you understand that you're a child of God and may you experience God loving you like you've never been loved in your life. May the love of God be real to you. And may you be a vessel of honor that carries the love of your Father as an ambassador to your world. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you strong. Even in times of difficulty, times of weariness, times that you don't know May the grace of God be there, even like Paul who cried out to God three times, and God said, my grace is sufficient for you. May this grace be real. May this grace be rich in your life, and may this grace through our Lord Jesus Christ sustain you and carry you and keep you in the name of Jesus Christ and the fellowship, the communion, the presence of the wonderful Holy Spirit, the one Jesus sent to be your comforter, your helper. May he be real. May He reveal Himself to you. May you sense His presence in the evening, in the morning. May you sense His comforting voice. May He be the strengthener, the advocate of your life. God loves you, never doubt for a moment. We love you. God's committed to you. We are committed to you. Let's make this world a better place because we can. Come on, we're the hands of Jesus. We are the feet of Jesus. We are the ambassadors of heaven. Reach for the stars. Dream big. God is your partner. There's no reason to settle down here. Go higher than you ever can, could, thought you could. God bless you. We love you. Please keep social distancing as you leave. Stay safe. Be patient. Let's leave orderly and keep things safe for the glory of God. God bless you. We love you. Have an amazing week. Amen. Amen and amen.